Last time I showed you my high fidelity magnet matrices. And since you seemed to like the project, I decided I will show you the second type I made, which is a bit simpler using addressable LEDs. I made the off the shelf magnets work this time, so it actually works better. And since the LEDs are not multiplexed anymore, they can go really bright. This video is sponsored by Eisler. So actually this project started independently of the magnet matrices that I showed you last time. Initially I wanted to develop a fourth version of my LED wall. The third version was quite nice, but the surface mount LEDs were very susceptible to these power surges I got from turning on my power supplies at full current. Quite a few LEDs died rendering the wall unusable. Since the surface mount LEDs are connected to huge ground planes. It was quite difficult to replace those. And I really didn't want to replace a whole panel just because one LED died. My older LED walls are more robust and they are based off those WS2811 chain lights. So I thought I will make the next LED wall from these addressable LEDs that have the controller already inside. They are already nice and bulky. So actually I might not need the ping pong balls anymore and make a quite dense LED wall from those 8mm LEDs here. They are also available in 5mm sizes. So I designed a 5x5 matrix with a snake pattern and a connector on the back that could be assembled to a bigger wall. There is really not much to it. Usually you would need resistors in series and decoupling capacitors per LED. But I didn't even bother putting in the resistors and didn't bother to populate the capacitors as you will see later. Traumatized from the repair of the LED wall, I thought of a way of making it easier to repair and actually used solderless staggered holes. As you can see they are shifted slightly, so if you put in the LED, the legs spread apart a little bit, holding the LED in place and making some connection. I ordered the boards at Eisler and receiving the boards I realized that the pad size is a little bit too narrow. The staggering was looking okay, but I wanted something that could also be soldered. So I quickly changed the footprint to an oval one and reordered the boards. Version 2 looked more promising. I also added a silk screen marking for the flat side of the LED, so it would be easier to assemble and it would be hidden underneath the LED in the end. I tried to populate the whole board using the staggering, which was already really sketchy because of the long legs that could short, but it worked. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, ah! Did I kill it? Did I kill my... because everything here is shorting. Yeah, alright, it's not a viable solution. So I actually soldered them on and clipped the legs. The segment was already cool. And I was probably able to assemble a wall out of this. But because I researched the magnet matrices before, I thought maybe I can give the matrix an option to actually add the magnets and the microcontroller to run it standalone. I researched the magnet connectors before that didn't work with the other matrix. But on this one we could actually make it work. For this we only need to think a little bit out of the box and rotate the LEDs so the footprint wouldn't interfere with the footprint of the magnet. This way I also made the space for the microcontroller and the other connectors. Unfortunately to have the connector centered we needed to add another row and column. So it was a 6x6 now. I got the LEDs and magnet connectors from AliExpress. Oh, yes. If you're interested in rebuilding it, I put the links to the parts, the design files and my tools in the description. <laughs> I decided to use the ATtiny 1604 since I had some spares here in my lab. To be sure that it would work with the addressable LEDs, I saw that a UPDI programmer board that uses the JTAG to UPDI on the Nano. I added also this chip programmer socket so I can put in the chip there and exposed all the pins to a pin header that I can test with my prototype LED board. I made a tutorial on that a few years back but unfortunately the mega tiny core only supports this programmer in version 1. So you have to be careful picking your board library. And the tiny NeoPixel library cool. works quite well with the mega tiny core as you can see. So this was the proof that I needed to order the new boards. 
Receiving version 3, I unfortunately discovered that I had the power lines on the opposing magnet connectors flipped. Don't ask me how. So I fixed that and ordered version 5. I can't remember what version 4 was. To add to the confusion, I also made a 8x8 version. So I had also to update that one and order them as well. Refining all those experiments requires the fast iteration loop. Eisler, today's sponsor, is my go-to place for this as their blitz service is able to deliver your boards within a couple of days. But also their budget option offers competitive prices with free shipping made in the EU. Using Eisler for years, I always mention they are constantly improving. Back then, two years ago, such narrow millings were only supported in the HD option. Now with the improved tooling, they are able to provide that in Blitz and Budget too. And by using the coupon code BOARDLUNI, you can get a few bucks off. Their newest edition, Simple Supply, is a service that provides a quick way of sourcing parts for your project from one place. By uploading your design files, the part numbers are read and matched with the best offer from all the well-known distributors. If an exact part number isn't provided, the wizard helps finding a match. During checkout, simply enter the count of boards to be assembled. The price calculated already includes an extra margin of parts needed for the assembly line. A few days after ordering, you will get all parts in one package shipped from Eisler. So check it out! With the newly arrived fifth version of the boards, it was time to assemble what's supposed to be the final edition. I put in all the LEDs according to the silk screen, took this 3D printed frame from the future and held the LEDs in place so they will be spaced correctly during the soldering. I figured out the best way of soldering these is to solder only one pin first, then clip off all the legs and solder the remaining pins with easier access. Since it's only a few components, I solder them on by hand. As you can see I didn't have the right pin headers. So I just soldered on one that covered the power programming and RGB input pins. Usually the magnets would be soldered directly at the edge, but I want these matrices to be tileable, so they need to be set in like that. And since the LEDs are on the other side, we need to solder the legs from this side, which is a little bit difficult with the magnets. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, using our programmer, we can also program the AT Tiny in place. Nice! And it actually works! <laughs> As spoiled before, I already tested the 8x8 version of the board, but soldering 64 LEDs, that's 256 pins, is quite dreadful. Anyways, to complete that, I designed a nice case around it in Blender. Why Blender? Oh well, Fusion decided to hit me with some free user limit. I don't care. Blender is good enough for this. I also made a 6x6 version and printed them quickly. The big one looks nice. But actually I like the compact form factor of the little ones. Since putting them in the case, the power pins wouldn't be exposed anymore. I just made a quick battery magnet thing that I could attach to it. While the case for that was printing, I was already performing the first tiling tests. And somehow one of the matrices was acting up. Uh -oh. I thought, oh no, it's the same problem I got with the last matrices. Why is that? But it was suspicious that it was only one matrix that was not working. And after taking a closer look, I just discovered a cold solder joint. And now it works! That's cool. I put everything in its cases and it's really cool to play around. Although those LEDs are only 8-bit, with the individual controllers you can utilize the full brightness. What you are seeing here is just a fraction. 
When I press the button, you can see how bright they can get. It's amazing. There is also the nice detail where you can connect an WLED external driver to the board. Now it's only getting power and when I connect the data line, the external driver is overruling the AT Tiny. This is simply done by putting a 470 ohms resistor between the AT Tiny and the LED line. So whenever we get an external signal, that will won't dominate. I'm really happy with the outcome of this matrix. If you want me to develop some cool code for these, like the video and share it with a friend. That really motivates to put in some hours. But you can also support me on Patreon with a PayPal donation, a channel membership and on GitHub. Thanks to all my supporters there and thanks to Eisler for sponsoring this project. I see you next time. Bye.